Today's topic is the concept of oneness and yoga philosophy. So the history of this concept of oneness comes from thousands of years old philosophy of the Vedanta and Vedas or the yoga philosophy. Before I forget, please look me up on the web. I have this YouTube channel as well as blogs and other social media. Look up Neels Nirvana, N-E-E-L-S hyphen Nirvana. Please like, subscribe, and spread this information. This is for peace and happiness. The idea for today is to get a history of this concept of oneness and the philosophy starting from the roots of yoga. So the meaning of the word yoga, if you um, are not aware, it means union or adding or connectedness. Uh, there's actually an English word which is exactly from the word yoga. It's called yoke. And it's probably the closest. And uh, the Sanskrit word, which is yog. So in English we say yoga, but it's actually the Sanskrit word is yog. Uh, the core principle of yog or yoga is unity and oneness. It is the idea that everything in the universe is interconnected. So the connection of mind and body as well as our individual to the universe. By the way, many folks I meet in the Western world uh, are not even aware that yoga originated in India thousands of years ago. Uh, some of the youngsters probably think it's just an American thing. Uh, but anyway, so it th originated thousands of years ago. The earliest and the core text of Hinduism are the ancient texts called the Vedas, which according to many researchers are one of the oldest texts in the world. Although primarily they were tra transmitted verbally and not written, but verbally across generations. And uh, the Vedas primarily had ancient ritualistic practices dominated and subsequently, the summaries of those Vedas, or one could say the later versions of the knowledge, were written by ancient rishis or the sages uh, with great insight, and they condensed the philosophies from the Vedas into shorter texts called the Upanishads. There are a large number of uh, these texts text uh, called Upanishad, which literally means uh, sitting near the enlightened, enlightened person. So this knowledge was gathered by close proximity and under a guru. Um, and this knowledge of the Upanishads are also called Vedanta, which means the end of the Vedas or the summary of the Vedas. So the summary of the Vedas, the ending of the Vedas is Vedanta. And this knowledge of Vedanta is written in these textbooks called the Upanishads, which are primarily written in Sanskrit and have a number of shlokas or uh, rhythmic patterns of poetry. The Bhagavad Gita is another text which could be counted as one of the Upanishad, um, although it's it's not called an Upanishad, but it's around the same time frame. And it's also part of an epic tale, one of the epics of uh, Hinduism called the Mahabharata. The Bhagavad Gita is also uh, named, the name itself means it's a song. A Geet is a song. It's a song of God or the divine song, literally. The sages of that era also composed many other texts like the epics. Um, for example, the Ramayana is another epic along with the Mahabharata. And the later, uh, there were other stories which were written in the texts called the Puranas. There were elaborate stories about the gods and goddesses of Shiva and Vishnu and Durga, etc. 
And there were also sutra texts like Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. So this whole concept of the texts coming from yoga and the sutras and the Vedic knowledge is where the concept of oneness came from. Vedanta prescribes four major paths of yoga, which are the Karma Yoga, which is the yoga of work as worship, the Bhakti Yoga, the, vo the devotional part, the Raja Yoga, which is the physical yoga and the discipline, asanas, pranayama, etc., and the Jnana Yoga, which is the yoga of knowledge. So, since the topic is about Upanishads and the knowledge of oneness, this, the core of the Upanishads and the Vedanta points to the fact of universal oneness of everything. And there is a Mahavakya, Mahavakya is a great uh, message called Tat Tvam Asi, meaning you are that. And the same meaning is also in other Upanishads. This is in one of the Upanishads called the Chandogya Upanishad. The other similar phrase is Aham Brahmasmi, that is I am the Brahma, the deep within. And this whole philosophy is um, of non-duality, of everything being one, is called the Advaita Vedanta. Advaita, the word Advaita means non-dual. Advaita in Sanskrit is the, it means two or dual. Advaita is which is non-dual, which is everything is one. That's the implication. So as we focus inward to investigate who we are, there are many, many layers of our existence. But gradually we get more and more insight and ultimately it leads us to this oneness or the blankness or it's called nothingness in Buddhism and it's also called the oneness. So oneness and nothingness ultimately is the same which means there is just one existence. There are multiple meditations that we could uh, practice for greater insight um, which I will discuss or have separate sessions with the uh, guided meditations. So now getting back to our topic today of nothingness or oneness. In, even in modern science, we talk about our bodies being made up of trillions of cells and the cells at the lowest levels are built by the molecules like the protein molecules, fat molecules, etc. The water molecule and the molecules are built of atoms. And the atoms of course have subatomic particles and packets of energy or waves. But one of the facts is that um, these atoms cannot be destroyed, have never been created by humans are, are destroyed by humans. The atom, atoms have existed here before we were born or before the humans were born, or even before life on earth was born, or even before the earth was born. The atoms have existed. They were came out of the earth. So all the atoms in our body were once part of other stars. So that itself brings us to this idea of oneness of everything. There's also the concept of the string theory and the new uh, quantum physics and they talk about uh, everything being similar strings and change in one place affecting something instantaneously millions of miles away and uh, those are things that the latest physicists are still working on but it's just pointers that I wanted to bring up in terms of the oneness. The yoga practitioners and today's yoga practitioners in contemporary global yoga movement, oneness is like a gospel people talk about, oh, we are one. The process of yoga practice offers us pathways to dispel the mental impurities and lead us back um, to something beyond our body, mind, emotions, and intellect which bring us back to the universal consciousness of the divine self. 
So the ultimate purpose of the yoga practice is to promote this lifestyle and bring about uh, joy and happiness and well-being and reduce the amount of suffering. But it also, uh, it can only be helped when we are conceptualized, when we realize the interconnectedness and the oneness of everything. And um, hope you like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I am promoting oneness and wellness and happiness and joy as far as I can reach. So please like my video, share, subscribe, um, also the blogs. Thank you very much. Namaste.